Solar Reserve is an artwork which is a portrait of a electrical generating station in Nevada which is solar powered, realized as a virtual world. So in this virtual world you have an enormous stage as such, a landscape. On it you have a group of performers, in this case they are animated mirrors. But if you spend time with it, you see that it's very slowly unfolding, both in terms of the light changing, but also the camera moving from the landscape up to space and then back down to the landscape. The process by which a work like this is made begins really on the landscape. I produce portraits. So in this instance, I worked with a photographer who spent a couple of days on site at the solar reserve facility. And his job is to function a little bit like a human scanner on the landscape. And he has to document everything in three dimensions. So he has to walk around all these objects, photographing them from all sides, all the mirrors, the towers, any elements in the landscape, such as rocks and those kind of things. This is a work in time. So he has to do it at dawn, at dusk and middle of the day. And at the end of his work, we get maybe four or 5,000 photographs sent out to a team of producers, primarily modelers. They build everything as virtual objects. So everything you see in the world has been built by hand in a 3D program as a portrait of something in the original scene. And we put all these dynamics in place, such as the movement of the sun, the animation of the mirrors, the quality of the light, and then they are brought into what's called a game engine. So as an artist, I use game engines as my primary medium. And at the end of a long process, up to a year, it's exported as a piece of software. So really what people see here is a piece of software. It's, it's a file which produces the image that's seen on the LED wall. And that image is then immediately discarded. So really the only real record of that moment is your memory of it. It is a document of a real place, but the real place has been represented in its totality as a virtual world. So it may look a little bit like a film, but it really is not of that history. It's of an alternative history. Lincoln Center is really a, an absolutely extraordinary site to place this, this intervention. This is a site of performance, of many different types of performance. And in an abstract sense, this is a performing image. It's an image in which 10,000 mirrors are animated to follow the sun. And I always thought of those mirrors almost like dancers or performers. So unusually, you have the public arriving to the Lincoln Center to see a performance and then spend some time and then they leave. So they will arrive perhaps with the sun blazing and as they leave, the sun will be going down. So you have this wonderful opportunity for people to witness the performance here and then see the work in two configurations as they come in and go out. And that's rare. You know, in other sites in the city, people just be charging by. But here you have this delay, this time delay and that's a rich possibility for a medium such as the one that I work in. So the hope is that the public will almost, as in the concert halls, come sit on the bench and spend time with the world.